at it again, baby, and we have another one with the brother Larry Elder. Let's dive in. Well, Harvey Levin of TMZ and I had a pretty feisty conversation in which he argued that President Trump was essentially being racist for not recognizing systemic racism. The conversation started out okay, but it went south pretty fast. At the same time, Donald Trump is touting that he feels he is has been better for um, African Americans than anybody except possibly Abraham Lincoln. Possibly, and, he, and he's trying to um, paint a fairly rosy picture of what it's like for Black people in America under his tutelage. So, how do you square the two? This man is doing something about the economy before the coronavirus pandemic. Historically low unemployment. The man has signed the First Step Act, which allowed some something like 5,000 mostly black men to have their sentences reconsidered and reduced an average of about 75 months. He's also spent more money on enterprise zones. He's put funding on HBCUs for the first time of over a period of 10 years. No one's ever done All that right. before. The president is also saying that there is no systemic racism. In America, there is no systemic. Whoa, 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 whoa! See, did, did you listen? I like to try to be fair. Y'all, y'all know this. And did you notice how he, Larry, was naming a bunch of facts, uh, which is which is one thing that I I, I love um, about you know the Larrys and the Thomas Souls and and these guys and gals. When you bring the facts, like you you can state your opinion, but you better back it up with some facts, or I'm gonna call you out on your BS. Okay. He was just naming a bunch of stuff that they couldn't refute. I feel like I, I feel like if they could, they would have. But he just totally changed the subject. <laughs> you know, right, right, run that back, run that back. Five months. He's also spent more money on enterprise zones. He's put funding on HBCUs for the first time of over a period of ten years. No one's ever done All that right. before. The president is also saying that there is no systemic racism in America. There is no systemic racism in policing. And there isn't. There isn't. Okay. All right. There is no evidence of systemic racism whatsoever. In fact, the evidence shows the opposite. I was just about ready to say there's a black Harvard professor named Roland Fryer who assumed, just as you did, that the police were killing blacks just because they were black. He did a study. Not only did he not find it, he found out, which tracks other studies, the police are more hesitant, more reluctant to pull the trigger on a black suspect than on a white suspect. And it's common sense because of people like people in the media who immediately assume that a cop is doing something racist or motivated because the victim is black they're afraid to shoot a black person much greater than they are afraid to shoot a white person larry larry i love how he touched on common sense because <laughs> i'm somebody who at least who tries to rely on their common sense quite a bit and uh i feel like that is unfortunately not common these days and it's crazy like we we, we might need to change the name common sense to something different <laughs> rare sense or something i don't know because it ain't common i'll tell you that um but yeah, I, I, let, let's hear how they refute what he just said. Afraid to shoot a black person much greater than they are afraid to shoot a white person. Larry, Larry, you're from Los Angeles and you know what happened with the Rampart Division. It was an incredible scandal where they were going into the inner city and they were they were they were setting people up and planting drugs and doing all this stuff. I mean, this has been going Harvey, on for a long time. Harvey, Harvey, 20 years ago. From 1992 to 2002, Los Angeles had back-to-back -back black police chiefs, even during the O.J. Simpson case. And what happened? Willie but Williams, that doesn't mean but that doesn't mean that doesn't you're, you're make it go away, Larry. This you're, you're, <laughs> How are you going to bring up something that's 20 years old and apply it to something today? <laughs> can't look at a black police chief and say, therefore, there isn't systemic racism. Right. We had a black there, president. Is there no racism in America then, Larry? I mean, uh, come on. Minute, you got First, you said systemic racism. Now you're saying racism. Which one do you want? No, I'm saying there's no, I, I'm there's saying there's no evidence. Systemic. There's no evidence whatsoever of systemic racism. I ask you to prove okay. it. A, a, a cop watching somebody run away, a black man run away, shooting him and killing him. A guy walking into a convenience store, shooting him and killing him. I, you know, Larry, we've seen this. Okay, I, here's the uh, thing, I, I, Larry. I, the, I, I, of, I hear, of, I hear of, what you're Harvey, saying about Harvey. the studies. My thing is, and I don't want to undermine, you know, racist situations and circumstances that actually do happen because they do happen um i think we all understand that and know that but the prevalence or the numbers at which people want to believe that they do happen is just not there are there racists and bad cops yeah absolutely there, there sure are just just like there are bad there's bad teachers 
you know, and we just watched a video not too long ago, maybe three days ago, of a teacher that spent three days a week teaching her kids about um, um, bedroom stuff. We'll just say that, you know, because of YouTube purposes. So there's bad teachers, just like any other occupation. Now, should we stamp out those cops that are bad? Absolutely, because those bad cops give the good cops you know, a, a, a bad veil over them because all the bad cops are put all over the news and rightfully so, rightfully so, those cops should be plastered all over the news and put on blast and put on front street because they are in a position of power. But I think it's also important to recognize that that is, and I don't, I don't have any statistics on this, but I would assume that out of 100% of cops, the bad ones probably occupy half of 1%, maybe 1%. You know, so you have 99, the other 99% that's put in a bad light because of just that 1%. And I think it's important that we recognize that and not just say, oh yeah, all cops are racist, all cops are bad, because I feel like that's uh, what some people have been doing. But anyway, let's dive back in. Seen this. Okay, I, here's the thing. I, I, Larry, I, 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 hear, I hear what you're saying about the studies. I mean, let me, let, me try, let me try it this way. There are 50 million police civilian interactions every single year. Out of that 50 million, there are 11 million arrests. Out of that 11 million arrests, 60,000 officers are assaulted. Out of all of that, 1,000 civilians are killed. Half of them are white, 250 of them were black. Almost all of them were resisting with the weapon or resisting violently. When you get down to unarmed black men being shot by white cops, you're talking about less than 4% of the total. And unarmed does not mean not dangerous. Michael Brown was unarmed, but he was reasonably perceived as dangerous. It is rare, Harvey, you guys are exaggerating this. When a white person gets killed by a cop, nobody gives a damn. When a black person gets killed by a cop, people are out in the streets. And in Philadelphia, you're talking about a city where the police, where the police, where the uh, captain of the city council is black. Almost every single member of city council is a Democrat. They've had, they've had black mayors. The police chief is a black female. And you're still talking about systemic racism. It's ridiculous. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Really. You're making the country well, okay. work. I, I, we actually make the country work. And one, one thing that I will say in their defense, I think, I think their concern is coming from a good place. I don't, I don't think they mean any harm, right? But what they do have to recognize is that the victim's mentality, I feel like is really, really detrimental to people's psyche. When you've been told your entire life, you're a victim, you're a victim, people are out to get you, they're out to get you, you, you you're not going to climb the corporate ladder because um, they're going to keep you down, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're not going to allow you to climb because you're a person of color and they're all white, then like at a certain point, you lose all motivation to even try. Man, why am I going to try if, you know, this person and that person are going to keep me in the place that I'm at? But you guys can let me know how you feel. If there's any studies on it, please let me know if there's any videos referencing, uh, you know, the victim's mentality. I would love to check it out. This is just stuff that, you know, off the top of my head, common sense would tell me people would feel, you know, being told that they were a victim their entire life. But let me know how you feel. Larry, I, Larry, I, I, Larry, I'm going to be very clear about something. Hold on, I'm hold on, Charles. Myself. I sleep I just am not ashamed of and myself. And maybe you do too, and that's should fine. Be. So we're going to disagree on this. Well, well, maybe you should Larry. be. Maybe you yeah. should be, Larry, because there is a the facts problem. Are on my side, the facts, there is the facts a are problem in this country, and you are relying on statistics, and you are not looking at humanity, Larry. What? said that you're relying on statistics <laughs> you're not looking at human what does that even mean looking at humanity what does that mean <laughs> we should always rely on the statistics the facts they don't lie men lie women lie but the numbers don't lie i don't even know can somebody explain to me what that even meant you are relying on statistics and you are not looking at humanity it's called facts it's called facts did he really say you are relying on statistics, not looking at humanity? <laughs> you are relying on statistics, and you are not looking at humanity, it's called Larry. Facts. He sure did. All the humanity. <laughs> it's called facts. It's called yeah, evidence. Well, I gave you a, I gave you a open your eyes, Larry. There's evidence. There's visual answer. evidence every day. Open your eyes if you're not seeing it. 1997, Time Magazine, CNN. Ask black teens and white teens about racism. Is racism a major problem? This is 23 years ago. Is racism a major problem in America? They said yes. But then the black teens were asked this. Is racism a big problem, a small problem, or no problem in your own daily life? 
89% said no problem or a small problem in my own daily life. In fact, more black teens and white teens said failure when to was, take But Larry, what did you say that study was? In in bigger, hold on, Larry. You said that study was in 1997? He brought up something that was 20 years ago. So you, the, the, the whole year thing, you're not sliding with it. I'm going to call you out. I'm going to call you out. Uh, whoever the white guy is, uh, next, next, I don't know these guys' names, so I, I forgot to put a label. Okay, the guy on the left, we'll, we'll say that. Um, <laughs> and it's funny that worked out that way. Well, I, I don't know his political affiliation. But anyway, um, he brought up something that was like 20 years ago. So like, if he can do that, then Larry can too, but he's he's about to be a hypocrite. Did you say that study was in 19, hold on, Larry. You said that study was in 1997? Yeah, before Barack Obama got elected and re-elected. So I would think that okay. whatever race... 1997, we're in 2020. You want to talk about... You want to bring up a study that was done 23 years ago? The relevance of it is, wouldn't you think that America was more racist in 1997 than now? Even then, black kids... No, actually, no. I think it's, actually, I think it's more racist now than it was in 97. Because why, I think people are. So I'll, 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 Larry, let, Larry, let me tell you. I don't. I don't hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Larry, why I want to say so why. On a country that Larry, is Larry, so please. Traditional. Larry, Larry, please. I'm going to tell you why I think it's. Is it this guy right here black? I mean, he looks black. I'm, I'm just making an assumption. I don't. I don't like I said, I don't. I don't know these two guys. The guy right here on the right. He looks to be of 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 some uh, ethnicity that 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 isn't uh, white. But well, he might be partially white. But I would assume he's successful, at least on some type of level, if he's with TMZ. So how is that possible if this place is like super racist? He just was one of the lucky ones that, that just made it through, that didn't get held down. Like, I don't I'm just asking a question. I'm just asking a question. Country that Larry, is Larry, please. Larry, Larry, please. I'm going to tell you why I think it's more racist. And then I want to give you the final wow. word. OK. Okay. Thank you. I think Respect it's more him. racist because of Donald Trump, because of the things he says, oh, really? and he has given permission. He, let me just make my point. You get the final word. He has given people permission to be racist. He has given people permission to be violent. He has talked about liberating states. He has talked about uh, white supremacist groups standing by. He is you, deliberately not using the proper pronunciation of Kamala Harris's name. He is doing a lot of stuff that sounds racist, that is giving people permission. And that's why I think we're seeing this influx of racism, which I believe is Wow. Worse than in 97. Wow. You have the last word. You have the last. Why, why, why don't we do a new study? I'm sure I'm sure there has been some kind of study. If you guys know of any uh, studies on racism um, in the country today, please let me know. Uh, I would love to check them out. Maybe I'm proven wrong. Who knows? I'm open to that. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I mean, that's that just is what it is. I got to go by what the statistics say. A fact is a fact. I don't care about how I feel. <laughs> if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. It is what it is. So let, let me know if there's are, if there are any uh, new studies on it today, since apparently we're more racist now than we were before. Please. Last word. Wow. The high point of race relations for both whites and blacks took place during the administration of George W. Bush. It dramatically catered during the second term of Barack Obama when he was saying things like the Cambridge police acted stupidly, we have a little place called Ferguson, when he was touting Black Lives Matter. That's when race relations really declined. There is a city in uh, in, tech, in Texas called Abilene, which is the city of 100,000 population or more that most voted for Donald Trump, almost 80%. Guess which city just voted for a black mayor, its first black mayor, Abilene, Texas. Now, how is it if Donald Trump was sending a racist dog whistle to voters, the same racist dog whistle turned around and voted for a black man for mayor? It's BS. Donald Trump has done a great deal for black people, most especially... He's got a point. He's got a he's got a little bit of a point. It's not a direct correlation, but um, he was try the the other guy was trying to say Donald Trump supporters uh, were uh, liberated by Donald Trump and can now be racist. But if that's the truth, then in a city where eighty percent of the people voted for Trump, you wouldn't think that they would vote for anybody that was black if they're all racist, right? But I will say it depends on who else was on the who who else he was racing against too got to take that into account if it was another black person then of course <laughs> your only choice is you know a black person and a black person well okay well you gotta vote for one so if you if you know the details of that situation let me know in the comment section
particularly the economy. Secondly, supporting choice in school. Thirdly, doing something about the competition posed by illegal aliens. That's good enough for me. The rest of it, to me, is just white noise, pardon the expression. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we will leave it there. <laughs> that was good, Larry. That was thank good. You. Much love, Larry. Harvey. Thank you. All right, thanks, Larry. You got it, guy. <laughs> Hey, and you know, I love how it was was respectful at the end. You know, even even Larry even made a joke right there. You know, <laughs> the rest is just white noise. <laughs> he made sure he covered his behind, which I I don't think they would have taken offense anyway. But you know, he said, <laughs> "Pardon the expression," but uh, yeah, it's it's good good to see the brothers laughing there at the end, even after a fiery uh, debate. And that's what it's about, baby. That is, ex I, I wasn't expecting that. That that is exactly what it should be about having a fiery discussion where you're going back and forth, you know, one side's trying to prove, you know, that they're right over the other side. And then at the end, we all shake hands, kumbaya, and go have a few drinks afterwards. And I definitely have to agree with Larry on that for obvious reasons. You guys can let me know if you disagree. Please, if you disagree with me, please comment in the comment section and let me know why, because I could be wrong. But from what I just saw, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know or think that I could be on that one. I think I've, feel like that one was pretty um common sense but y'all let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below like share comment and of course hit that subscribe button right up over there it's right there click it it's the subscribe button make sure you hit it before you leave all right peace and love and check out that video too i'm out